Well, hey there everyone. So this week I really wanted to do something that I could put over a hoop skirt. So this isn't going to be a character or anything. This is just a dress that I thought up in my noggin to put over a hoop skirt or not. So let me kind of show you what I was thinking. So for the material for this dress, I a bit ago ended up picking up a lot of this like blue costume fabric. Dude, focus on the fabric and not my cat this <laughs> so this I have like a whole lot of this so I figured I would make like a ball dress kind of out of it so let me show you what I was thinking so I thought up a couple ideas here not me not the cat <laughs> So this was my original idea, um, so obviously it's going to have a hoop skirt under it, um, and I was thinking some like flowy sleeves, and then the back would be this corset back here. And then I started thinking of like variations, so of like a different top with puff sleeves. And then I kind of settled on this one here, which is almost like a 19, like 50s, 60s like dinner dress or something. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with this one and again it will have the big like ball gown and it is gonna have the corset back here and that is all gonna be made out of this blue material not the cat not me out of this blue material here so so yeah this is another thrifted sew because this is thrifted material um, but you could also get costume costume um velvet at most fabric stores or even a walmart um but yeah i just want to put a hunk of it so i'm gonna use it let's just get into it so the skirt is going to be a circle skirt now that i've mastered it don't bite me um <laughs> and then the top is gonna be that like like the way i think of this top is the <laughs> dress that's in parent trap that the mom wears to go on the setup date on that like reenacted little boat uh date that the kids created she wore that beautiful like black dress and that top gives me like that vibe where it comes all the way up like this and then just has like little straps so yeah so today what we're gonna start with is the skirt again because I just felt like getting that out of the way and again it was the least menacing of all of it. So this is going to be a circle skirt um, but instead of doing it like on a corner and cutting like the half circle or quarter circle um, I didn't have enough kind of space for that so I ended up having to do eight panels which would then create a full circle skirt. Um, so it is a full circle skirt but in eight panels. So I'm going to cut all of those out and then sew them all together. So I'm going to see you after all of that. All right, now that all of the panels are made, I'm gonna forego sewing the skirt fully together because I want to see what I'm dealing with with the top. So I'm gonna forego that for a second. And now I'm going to move on to the top. So for this pattern, I'm just gonna create it with my noggin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my usual thing that I do is I take my original corset pattern and I'm gonna mark up what I'm doing with that. So I'm going to kind of nix the neckline. I'm just gonna have the straps are technically here and then I'm just gonna draw a straight line or like a kind of a curved line over and then the arms. And I'm gonna keep the dart in because I feel like the dart would give it a nice texture to it. And then for the back, again, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Um, give it a really high neckline and then draw the arms. So there is technically like no straps. It's just gonna have a point, which you'll see. Um, because that's kind of how I want this dress to be structured. So once those are all cut out, I'm going to use what's left of this fabric to cut out those pieces. Um, and then I'm going to see you after all that.
okay, so after those are all cut out, it's time to start sewing things together. So the first thing I'm going to sew is the darts in the front. Um, and I found after I sewed the darts in the front and I kind of held the um, like shirt up to me, um, I didn't quite like the way it was looking because I didn't exactly draw the pattern out like correctly and so the front here was like really drooping and see so the problem is I didn't exactly have enough material to recut out the top so what I ended up doing was I kind of brought it in a little bit and then I you'll see how I recut it so I just recut it on the pattern or on the pieces that I already cut out to fit what I wanted it to do. So after I retrimmed those, I then re-sewed the darts and then I sew it down the sides, um, connecting the two back panels, which are separate because it will have a corset back. So I'm gonna meet you back after all that. Now the next thing that I have to do is I'm just going to take, I'm going to take my lining and my outer fabric, I'm going to lay them right sides together and then sew all the way around except for the bottom and then turn it right sides out and then I'm not going to iron it because this is a velvety so you don't really want to iron it but it stays flat anyways. So I'm just going to turn it right sides out and then I'm going to make these straps for it. So the straps for it are literally going to be like this big because it's just needs to connect from like here to here. So I'm just going to take a little fabric. Uh, like a just a little rectangle, fold it right sides together, sew it, turn it right sides out, and then I'm just gonna sew it straight to the inside of each of those strap things. So that's gonna give me the straps, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sew the bodice to the skirt. So the skirt again is all the way open, and then the back is open for the bodice because I haven't put in the corset part yet. So I'm just gonna sew it right sides together, and then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do after that. So I'm gonna catch you back in a second. All right, so now it is time for the corset back. So for the corset back, rather than putting in grommets and stuff that I usually do, I kind of wanted to do this a bit differently. So I was kind of looking up, you know how like some prom dresses and wedding dresses will have a corset back? So I kind of wanted to replicate that because um, there's like actual like corset adjusters that you can put into dresses that are like too small. Um, but I wanted to make my own. So pretty much what it looks like is there's two pieces. So there's one separate piece that has all the loops on it and then some boning in it. And then the other piece will have 
basically the same thing except it has a strip of fabric that will like close the gap once it's all like tied together um, so you won't see like bare skin you'll just see that fabric so those get sewn onto each side of the onto each side of the bodice and the top of the skirt so I'm gonna explain to you a bit of how I made that so for the little loops that are put on it I basically just made like a giant strap um, so again just a little rectangle fold the right sides together so it turn the right sides out and then so I made two of those for each of the sides that have the loops and then for the little rectangle for the separate one I literally just had like a rectangle folded right sides together sewed and then turned the right sides out and I have a rectangle and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little strip that I have and I'm you're gonna see how I do this but I'm gonna basically just place little loops all along it and then I'm gonna sew those loops down which you'll see me do it'll make more sense in a second and then for the boning of that one side I'm just gonna create a boning channel and then put some boning so it gives it some more structure so I'm gonna see you after all that Now for the other side, it's essentially going to be the same thing, um, except it's going to be on a big rectangly piece because that's going to be the like coverage part. So I'm going to take two rectangles, sew them right sides together, turn them right sides out, um, and then along one side of it, I'm going to put the loops on it, which you'll see me do again, and then sew the loops down. And then I was going to put boning in this, but then the boning on this side just looked a little bad, so I ended up taking the boning out. So it is just the loops and the cover for this side. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and sew them to the inside of the bodice and the skirt. So I kind of measured how far this is gonna go and I sewed the skirt up to that point. And then I went ahead and I sewed on the corset part. And then lastly for this, I did put some hook and eyes um, just kind of to keep things together. So I put some hook and eyes for the back panel so that when I get it on, it like kind of stays there rather than me having to like fiddle and move it and stuff by myself. And then to connect it, I just used ribbon. Um, I know the set that it comes with like on Amazon uses like sewn together like a bias tape almost. Um, but I just use ribbon. And then the last thing that I have to do for this dress is hem it, which I know how to do. So I'm going to do it the way that I usually do it. And then this dress is done. So I'm going to see you in the final look. So very last minute for this dress, I wanted to make a little detachable lace part. So pretty much what I'm doing is I took this lace that I had and I'm just cutting off about how long I want it to be. 
um, and I wanted to keep the little raw edges on the bottom because they're really cute and enclosed already. So basically I just cut out a big strip and then I connected it and then I made an elastic channel and put an elastic in and then I have a little detachable lace bit. So that's what I'm doing for this. here she is so I think this turned out pretty darn cute um yeah when I adjusted the top I accidentally brought the armholes in so there's like a lot of side boob and so I originally was gonna do like boob tape but then just decided on a nude bra so minus that I think it turned out pretty good I did do a lot of adjusting for the back corset part but it eventually kind of came together so that's good too and then the skirt is just super big and flowy and I love it and I love how it looks over a hoop skirt so I think this was quite a success and I finally got to use this giant hunk of fabric um I've had this stashed away for quite some time so I am happy I was finally able to use it um yeah and then i think that little like lace bit what that was like very last minute for me i was just kind of sitting there and i was like hmm i bet this could use a little little spice so i whipped that up in like two seconds uh and i think it looks pretty cute um it does look a little odd because it doesn't like follow the neckline or anything but i think it helps give it that like subtle hint of victorian ball gown kind of vibe when it has a hoop skirt so i quite enjoy that i also love that i can wear this dress in four to eight styles with or without the gloves so this is also just a very versatile dress like i love that with the little lace bit it's like i'm going to a victorian ball at eight 
but then without it it's like I have a red carpet at nine kind of style it kind of works for all occasions um, and then without it without it it's more of like a subtle like dinner dress maybe um, it kind of all of it gives me like prom vibes which I also enjoy um, because when I went to prom I had like a big poofy dress and it was gorgeous um, and I would have enjoyed this at prom as well so yeah I think it's turned out pretty good um, let me know which option you liked the most. We'll say without the lace, with the hoop skirt is option one. With the hoop skirt and the lace is option two. Uh, without the hoop skirt and the lace is option three. And then without the hoop skirt and with the lace is option four. And then if you want to throw in with or without gloves as well, go for it. <laughs> like, this also gives me, like especially with the gloves like Anastasia vibes um, I have done the Anastasia dress before it's obviously a different like silhouette and stuff but it's still like blue velvety and with the gloves it gives me like those vibes so I also enjoy that very much and I loved uh, throwing something over a hoop skirt again it's been a while uh, I think the last thing one well maybe the one and only thing I've done with a hoop skirt is the original Victorian ball gown that I did so I just like how I can wear this in a bunch of different styles and still look you know in all levels if that makes any sense so yeah let me know what you want to see more of i do have a couple things lined up um that i am going to be doing so i'm very excited for those as well this honestly took me like that's very loud bird. this took me like two days so i got this done like really fast and then had the rest of the week just kind of like poop around and do nothing um so yeah that was also very surprising for me so let me know what you want to see more of. I got more lined up. I'm ready to do more. So any who do, if you like what I did, go ahead and like and subscribe. I post most Saturdays, mostly at noon, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.